we have several machine rooms, and the one that we took a look at was one of our smaller render farm units. We actually called it the render farm annex. It was four rows of computational servers, almost all one U high. Uh, they ended up being arranged such that there was two cold aisles and five hot aisles. At 1,600 square feet and at 335 kilowatt IT load, if you take a look at that, that's 200 kilowatts per square foot. It was a very, very dense space. We're at a point now we couldn't make it any denser because our air conditioning load was actually uh, capped out. The air conditioner itself, the main supply was from one 90 ton unit on our roof, and then we had three additional crack units at 30 tons each, each split with 15, young, 15 tons so they could be cycled in that manner. We are at a point now where we actually could not modify our existing air conditioning units and take it offline for any length of time without taking off some of our computational power as well. So the actual cold oil isolation became an ideal solution. As I mentioned, the room was nearly maxed out for the air conditioning, so we had to have little or no impact on current operations. That means we couldn't take the air conditioners offline, we couldn't take our computers offline. When we have a deadline for our film, it's fixed in time. It is a stone wall. We can't ask for five more days. We can't ask for another week. We can't take off a third of our computational power because that'll affect our actual film release date. More so, to reduce the actual cost, we don't want to have any impact on our building engineers, IT staff, and other folks who are working to take the time off in order to save this additional energy. They wanted the impact to be absolutely minimal. So the actual containment we looked at, um, we went for not just a panel and curtain installation. When we worked with Polergy and we said we want a full containment system, we want to contain the cold aisle. And that actually involved installing the uh, panels and curtains, and we also discovered it involved additional blank blanking panels and air dam foam. The tuning after installed, it actually turned out to be a very easy installation. We did not need a single building engineer to come involved, and we had no downtime for any of our machines. It was absolutely transparent unless you were physically in the room watching it be installed at that time. After it was installed, and we worked with a building engineer. We actually raised our set points of our crack units from 72 to 85 degrees. Uh, the rest of the room became the hot aisle, so we could set it that much higher. To the crack units, the 30 tons, were put in standby. That means if the 90 ton unit couldn't keep that cold aisle cold, they would start cycling on. We actually got to turn one of the uh, crack units completely off. It was no longer even necessary. We actually had to reset the BMS alarms for our building management systems because it was saying that the room was overheating constantly. We had to reset it because now our new temperature thermostat controls were actually on the face of the machines and we were pulling actual data of temperatures from the CPUs themselves. So we could see inch by inch on every rack of what the temperature was and it was amazing. Our actual energy savings was uh, $30,000. If you take a look at the implementation cost at $18,700, that's amazing. More so, PG&E was fantastic to work with, and they gave us a 50% rebate on that, on top of that cost. Our absolute payback at the end of that was 3.7 months. That number was actually validated internally at Pixar, and then PG&E brought in what they call their hobo system, with an independent engineer to measure it, and they did third-party validation of that number as well. It, for us, that was the lowest hanging fruit. The uh, return, I mean, at this point, it was ridiculous. It was so quick. And that's all.